Two Stuart 5 H steam engines coupled together. Part 1, a look at the layout and behaviour of the engines. A while ago I made a short series of videos about the partial rebuild of this engine. This pair of Stuart 5 H steam engines are very well made. And when my friend said he wanted to sell this twin engine combination, I bought it. And here it is running on the kitchen table on compressed air. As you can see and hear from this video, it runs very well at a very low speed. But there is a slight clunk which gets a lot worse if you speed up the engine. From time to time I've watched quite a few videos where full size steam launchers are powered by engines very similar to this one. And in quite a few of the videos when the engines are running they make a lot of noise but it's not a nice noise, it's not like a V8 noise. It's a horrible mechanical clunking noise. And the reasons are many and varied. Sometimes it's due to having the valve timing retarded. I'll just explain. On a reciprocating steam engine, when the piston reaches the top of its stroke, it suddenly has to reverse direction. And quite unlike an internal combustion engine, when the piston reaches the bottom of its stroke, it also suddenly has to reverse direction. Some people who work with internal combustion engines do not understand the principle of a steam engine. One steam project that I'm currently on with is rebuilding a very old tangy steam engine and someone had drilled a hole right in the middle of the cylinder to fit a lubricator. So I went into great detail as to why this was not a good idea. I explained in the video that the silicone rubber piston ring would be damaged as it passed the hole in the centre of the cylinder. Then I got a comment from an expert viewer who said this was rubbish and the piston wouldn't come anywhere near the hole in the centre of the cylinder. I replied with a reasonable explanation but he was having none of it and in the end after about three or four messages I blocked the viewer from ever commenting again. So before anyone else comments about holes in the middle of cylinders not damaging piston rings please bear in mind that a steam engine piston is nothing whatsoever like an internal combustion engine piston. A steam engine piston is double acting. Back to this wonderful twin cylinder 5A. These are the drain cocks that I fitted to it and they're just normal steam blower taps. You may have noticed that when I opened the taps quite a lot of water came out of the pipes. Where did the water come from? Well obviously it's a steam engine so did it come from the steam? No, because after I ran this engine on steam I blew it through with compressed air, WD-40 and steam oil. So when my friend picked it up, it was completely dry from a water point of view. I can only think that the water has come from his compressor. My compressor is fitted with a water trap, because as air is compressed, you get quite a lot of water in the tank. And the last thing that you want is for the water to find its way into the airline. And that's why I use a water trap. A water trap is essential if you're using a compressor for spraying paint. But it's quite essential if you're running steam engines because water plus a cast iron cylinder equals rust and lots of it. This video is just an overview of the way the engine runs. Both of the water pumps work, I tried them when I rebuilt it. And in the clip a moment ago I put my finger over the inlet to the pump and I could clearly feel suction from the pump itself. So these small water pumps are capable of pumping air. I don't know anything about the history of this engine other than it was bought by my friend via eBay and I don't think it's done much running. I really do not think this engine's ever been in a boat. Originally it was crudely mounted on some rough pieces of soft wood but now it's mounted on two solid oak bearers which in turn are screwed to a mahogany plinth. The alignment of the two engines is fairly critical but not that critical because it uses this chain link drive in the centre and the way this works, having a common chain around two sprockets, just allows for a little bit of tolerance. It's time to speed up the engine, have a listen to it now. As you can hear, it makes a bit of a clunking noise when it goes a bit faster. The mechanical lubricator didn't work properly at very low speed, so I put my hand into the shop when I speeded it up just to tighten up the ratchet. So here's the question for all the experts, where is the knocking coming from? And which engine is making the knocking noise, or is it both of them? Is it the engine with the flywheel, or is it the engine without the flywheel? Maybe it's the big end or small end of one of the connecting rods. 
When I bought these two 5As from my friend, I took a long look at what I was going to do with them. I quite like the engine in this format, I don't like the knocking, but I'm sure I can get rid of that. I have a good idea what the problem is. One idea that I had was to convert them back to two individual 5A steam engines, which would be very easy. I thought about buying a couple of spoked flywheels for a 5A from Stuart Models and two box beds, machining them, and then I would end up with two 5A steam engines. But I don't know about that because at the moment I like them like this. I think what I'm going to do first, in the next episode I will remove the centre coupling and run the engines individually to see which one's making the most noise. I will only be happy when this engine runs almost silently. That's a tall order and it may not be possible, but I'll give it my best shot anyway and time will tell. That's it for this first episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.